Today we're driving the 2021 Volkswagen Atlas Cross Sport. This is basically a VW Atlas with a chopped roof and no third row. This is only a two row SUV. It's powered by a 3.6 liter V6, makes 276 horsepower, 266 pound feet of torque. This one has four motion all wheel drive. It also comes in front wheel drive. We've got a decent amount of ground clearance, some off road modes, about eight inches of ground clearance. This has 20 inch wheels, Volkswagen's IQ lighting, pretty sharp looking SUV, kind of different. It almost looks like uh, some of the chopped roof hot rods back in the day, but of course in a modern SUV form. Um, let's walk you around this new Atlas Cross, show you what it's like inside and out. We'll take it for a drive, do a fender sound system test at the end of the video, all the usual stuff. So we've got a fully digital gauge cluster display, a nice blend of physical controls, buttons, knobs, dials for our climate control, and uh, touchscreen inputs here in the infotainment. We have Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, and they're both available as wireless options, which is kind of cool. We have a couple of USB-C ports down there, a nice place to store our phone, good sized drink holders too. This has an eight speed automatic transmission, We've got an electronic parking brake, park assist, 360 cameras from above, a bunch of different drive modes, a lot of space and a lot of room in this Volkswagen Atlas. This is definitely a cavernous cabin and uh, I feel like this is built for the US market because just how small I feel in this space. I'm five foot 10, about 145 pounds and I am just swimming in this front seat. The armrests are so wide that I can't even really reach the wheel while uh, you know, putting my arms on the rest. So definitely a larger SUV. Um, Volkswagen's doing a really nice job with their packaging. They're making their interiors really large and this Atlas has one of the biggest ones. Of course, whenever your Volkswagen engine is running, you open the door, you get that lovely chime. Let's look in the back seat. So even though this has this chopped roof, you don't really lose a lot of space on the inside. You lose that third row, but in the back seat, we've got a really nice amount of room. Behind myself at five foot 10, I can almost completely stretch out my legs. There is just a lot of space. We've got heated rear seats, a couple USB-C ports, 115 volt plug outlet, a couple of cup holders. These uh, backrests recline a little bit more if you want them to. It's very comfortable, very open, very airy. We even get a little privacy screen right there. And you can see we've got some contrast stitching, different colored door panels, a lot of cheaper plastics in this Atlas. And for $50,000, it uh, doesn't feel like the best interior material qualities, but chances are you're not gonna be swinging for the premium SEL all wheel drive. You're gonna want something more like the SE, which costs about $35,000, which is pretty good pricing for something like this. Got an attractively styled interior, Volkswagen's new steering wheel with their new logo. Um, I think it looks pretty nice. Let's take a look out back. And actually first, let's fold down these seats. They fold pretty flat, giving us a lot of cargo space. There is unfortunately no way to fold down the second row uh, from the trunk, from the rear area. You have to go on each side and fold it down manually. So a little bit of an oversight there from Volkswagen for what is a pretty utility oriented SUV. We have a power tailgate. This Atlas is equipped with the tow package so it can tow around 5,000 pounds, which is pretty nice. We have a very high loading floor, but besides that, we get a compact spare tire, the Fender audio system subwoofer, a couple extra storage pockets on both sides here, and just a pretty basic rear hatcher. We've got a couple integrated hooks to put grocery bags and things here. Looks like there is also the option for a cargo cover. This rear angle is pretty interesting looking. I definitely prefer the looks of this Atlas Cross Sport to the standard Atlas. There isn't really anything too offensive looking about this SUV. We have nice LED headlamps with DRLs, Volkswagen's IQ lighting system, front end is sharp. We have 20 inch wheels. Under the hood, this 3.6 liter V6 is mounted very low. 
in proportion to the rest of the vehicle. Just ahead of that front axle, we get about 19 miles to the gallon combined, 17 in the city and 23 on the highway. Not the best fuel economy in this class. All right, let's hop in the driver's seat, show you around a little bit more in there, and we'll take this Atlas Cross Sport for a drive. So in this SEL Premium, we have pretty much all the features and luxuries and amenities you could want. Heated and cooled seats that you can turn on at the same time, total baller status, heated steering wheel button right here. And we don't yet have Volkswagen's haptic steering wheel controls, which I really appreciate. These physical buttons are much easier to differentiate and choose when you're not necessarily needing to look down at the wheel. We have a great cruise control system. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later once we get on the highway. Let's take a look at the reverse camera. Rotating lines, a little bit of distortion on the edges, but overall lets you see what you need to. And of course, if you want to engage that 360 camera, you just press the park button and that'll show you all the way around you and you can select different directions if you so choose. We also have a physical button to turn on and off stop start, which is very nice. If you want that system to be off, you have to disable every time you start up the vehicle. But luckily, you don't have to disable lane assist every time you get into the vehicle like you have in some previous years with uh, Volkswagen safety systems. This infotainment is pretty basic. Menu acts as a home button. Uh, you've got a swipe down screen for some quick access buttons right there. You can quickly adjust the instrument cluster and panel lighting with a slider. I do miss a physical control for that, but otherwise, it's pretty straightforward in here. Not a whole lot is hidden within the infotainment, which is great. We've got a bunch of different drive modes, so let's go into those. We have Eco, Sport, and Custom for street driving modes. There is a Winter Snow Driving Mode, and then a smattering of off-road drive modes. Um, you can even go in an off-road custom and adjust things individually like climate control, light assist, adaptive cruise control, steering weight, uh, how your all-wheel drive system will react. This Atlas Cross probably has a reasonable amount of off-road capability. It'll get you to your campsite. You're not gonna be doing rock crawling. There's no transfer case or body on frame architecture here, but I think with some of these off-road modes, the traction control should get you through some uh, slippery situations with relative ease. We've got a setting here for all of our assist systems. We can turn those on and off, and you can also quickly access all of that by pressing the button on the side of the turn signal stock and making some selections from there, which is nice. I like how Volkswagen has gotten the ergonomics right in this Atlas. It's funny how they nail it in some of their models and in other models like the new GTI and their ID4. It's a total mess with haptic controls and touch buttons. This Atlas Cross is very nice, so I will give them that. We have auto up-down windows on all four corners, a little button down there to pop the rear tailgate, um, auto climate control, a lot of storage, a lot of room and space in this. Look at this massive panoramic sunroof. We've got really big sun visors. They slide. A lot of seating adjustment. Found a pretty good driving position this week. All right, let's take this Atlas Cross Sport on the road and see how it drives. Steering is super light. I would almost go so far as to say a little bit too light, especially once you get up to speed. It's kind of difficult to drive this car smoothly. Uh, there's a lot of throttle on tip-in. It's very aggressive. You put down, you put your foot down just a little bit, and you get a little bit more acceleration than you want. I'm only about 20% throttle, and it feels like I'm wide open right now. And that's just in normal drive mode. If you put it into eco, nobody's home. It's super slow. You feel like you can't really get anywhere. And there's no real in-between between eco and normal. And then it's interesting because it dies down. It becomes super dulled. So you've got this kind of dual personality under 10 miles per hour, and then you really have to give it the beans to go anywhere after that. Let's talk about ride quality, NVH, handling. No surprises with handling here. It feels like a big, heavy crossover SUV. Um, not a lot of sporty character to the way this drives. The V6 is pretty quiet, pretty smooth. It sounds good at higher RPMs, though there's just not a ton of power here. It gets the job done, though. Ride quality 
isn't the best. It's okay. It gets over bumps pretty well, but there's a lot of cabin noise and intrusion. Um, not as much wind noise at highway speeds, which is nice, but there's some vibrations. There's definitely some uh, interior rattles when you go over bumps in this Atlas, and I'm sure some of that is due to these larger 20-inch wheels. Otherwise, though, these seats are very comfortable on the highway. This is a very nice cruiser. I have a good high driving position, nice visibility, even out of these side windows with their chopped, scrunched nature. Even out of the rear view mirror, I have a pretty good view despite the narrow uh, rear glass window back there. Let's put us back into normal mode and we will engage travel assist. This is one of my favorite features in this car and in all new Volkswagens, their new travel assist system is really well done. It keeps you nicely centered between the lines. You don't have to intervene too often. It gives you about 15 seconds or so between prompts if you have your hand off the wheel. And uh, it's just a nice system that you can quickly turn on very easily. If you want to disable it, you have to press the cruise control button again. But basically, it's lane keep assist, radar cruise control, all in one button press. If you want to just do standard adaptive cruise control, you can. Um, and you can adjust five mile an hour increments with that as you wish. One thing I do like about this cruise control system is that if you have the system on standby and you turn the car off, start it up, take it for another drive, it'll remain on standby. You don't have to completely re-engage the entire system all over again. You can just hit set and you're off and ready to go. Besides the fact that this Atlas doesn't have a third row, this Cross Sport doesn't really make any concessions for its lower roof or different shape. Um, I think it looks a lot better than the standard Atlas and it does drive pretty similarly. Besides that throttle calibration quirk, uh, that's really one of my main complaints about this car. It feels a little bit cheap for a $50,000 SUV crossover. This is the top trim. Most people probably won't be swinging for that, but for something in the mid to low 30s, this isn't a terrible buy. There are definitely some other SUVs and crossovers on the market that offer a little bit nicer of a driving experience. Let's see how this Atlas Cross Sport handles. Ooh, a little bit of understeer. V6 sounds nice though. No paddle shifters. We do have a sport mode that we can put the transmission into though. And we can manually select gears with our up down on the gear selector. So that was only about 15% throttle or so, and it really gave a large lurch off that stop sign. Brake pedal is a little bit touchy, a little bit sensitive, but that you can get used to. Put us back into sport mode here and see how it handles a couple of these entrance ramps. Definitely feels like a big, heavy SUV. Does not hide its weight too well. We do have a kick down switch with that throttle pedal. For the most part, this eight speed automatic has done a good job shifting this week. A few rough shifts, a few instances where it's been hunting around quite a bit. There is not a lot of torque from this V6. Um, and again, I haven't driven the four cylinder, so I don't know how that compares. While we're just cruising here on the highway, I think that kind of sums up the Atlas Cross Sport for everything that I needed to say about it. Let's go in and do a sound system test with this Fender Audio. Let's try pink mirrors, it's been a while.
little bit slow to accelerate around uh, slower traffic with the adaptive cruise control. We're set at 80 and we're really taking our sweet time getting up to speed here. You can easily set your following distance though with a press of this button right there. So there's a taste of the Fender audio system. Not the best premium audio at this price point. I think uh, it's probably kind of mid to uh, slightly below average in my range of things. It's okay. It does a decent job with uh, mid-tones, but uh, bass can get a little bit buzzy in these door panels. And we've got a little bit of speaker rattle when you really crank things up. So how can we sum up this Atlas Cross Sport? Well, there's not a lot sporty about it besides maybe its appearance and its looks, and it does look pretty good. It offers really nice packaging. Interior space is just cavernous in here. There's a lot of room for people, for stuff, um, despite what you may think from the outside. It's not as impractical as the appearances would suggest. The engine is okay. The throttle tuning is pretty poor. I wish Volkswagen would work on the calibration. You know, driving this Atlas Cross Sport just feels like it's not quite finished uh, in terms of some of the dynamics. The, tu the throttle tuning is a pretty big annoyance that has been difficult to adapt to and adjust to all week. Um, otherwise, though, this isn't a bad SUV. There are definitely some better options out there on the market. It does give you just about everything you want in an SUV like this, though. I'd probably swing for an SE or uh, maybe a mid trim around 35 40 grand is a good price to pay for something like this but i don't know if i would swing for this top trim it just doesn't offer the feel the quality the fit the finish the materials of a fifty thousand dollar crossover we definitely have some cheaper plastics down here some harder scratchier materials um, you can definitely feel some cost cutting and uh, catering to the american market in this atlas cross sport with some of the materials and just the way this the way this feels and drives down the road. It's not the most refined suspension tuning. Uh, there's definitely a little bit more NVH over bumps, potholes, noise, vibration, harshness than I would like. I think the new Tiguan feels a little bit higher quality. It drives a little bit better overall. And if you're not 100% smitten with the Atlas Cross Sports looks, that might be a better buy. I did also just see a refresh. Uh, if you haven't seen that new Tiguan video, go ahead and check that out. I just posted a few days ago. Uh, they seem to offer similar amounts of space on the inside, and uh, maybe this Atlas Cross Sport is a little bit too big for me. It depends who's going to be driving. If you're a larger person, larger driver, uh, you might be very comfortable in this. I would definitely recommend going and sitting in one and actually getting inside one of these vehicles before you make any purchase decisions, just to see how you fit in it, because it's a much larger space than a lot of other SUVs and crossovers out there, which could be a good or bad thing. It is comfortable, it's not very economical, so if you're looking for something that's going to sip gas, this is not your vehicle. In the last 877 miles, this has averaged about 19 and a half miles to the gallon. It does come with all-wheel drive, there is the option for front-wheel drive, it's got a decent amount of ground clearance, so it does all the crossover SUV things, it even tows about 5,000 pounds. So, you know, if you're looking for something that can kind of do it all, but maybe a jack of all trades but a master of none this is definitely that <laughs> all right guys well that'll be it for this video thanks for watching let me know if you have any questions in the comments uh, head on over to winding road magazine and daily motors youtube channel if you want to see more content on this atlas cross sport until then we'll see you guys in the next one take care